Join Dalton and Jacob as they discuss the ever-changing world of trading card games. TCG Buzz starts now. What's up, guys? It's your boy Dalton back at it again with Jacob. Yo. And we're here for another TCG Buzz podcast or episode, whatever you want to call it. And what are we going to be talking about today? Uh, we're going to be talking about Buddy Fight. Uh, Th- this thing right here? Yeah, that thing right there. And oh. maybe something a little controversial in the Buddy Fight community. Oh, no. I don't like controversy. But before we do that, I think it would be a good idea to remind the people out there, yo, you guys should subscribe to our channel, right? We got to hit that thousand subs, you know? That was horrible. There was no energy. You, you just kept fishing for me to jump in there to intervene you. It's got to be, yo, hit that subscribe button on the road to 1K and hit the bell to get them notifications. Like the video because ban list, baby. Ban, ban list. list. Whoa. That's a dirty word in the buddy fight community. It is very dirty. It's almost like if I were to just say F you, man. Yeah. Like, Something like that. Uh, it's, to some people, it's even worse. Yeah, yeah. It could almost be like saying the C word in America. What if you just throw in different letters? Just go, that's like saying the Z word. The Q we, we, word. we never say the Z word. You don't even say the Z word to replace the Z word. That's way too offensive. Oh, no, Dalton, we're going to lose our ad revenue in this <laughs> video. Oh, God dang it, Jacob. And you had to start it. You had to start it. <sighs> so this ban list thing, what... What about this ban list, besides the fact that it's such a dirty word in the community of buddy fight? I think I should first qualify why it's such a dirty word. Um, buddy fight is the per, one of the only card games possibly ever, you know, for more major card games, to not have any sort of ban list. That's very true. Very true. Uh, and it's gone four years strong with no ban list whatsoever. Approaching five, actually. Approaching five. And, uh, um, well... That worked out time. well for a while. It might be time for one. And that that's what, what we're discussing today. Mm. Is it time? Uh, so the way they used to do it is, first of all, the cards were broken. Mostly. Yeah. Mostly not broken. And usually when a card did get broke, Busted. Uh, I'm thinking like Kaiserion when it first came out was pretty broken. Right. It was very strong, uh, but soon enough, within one or two sets, we had some good counters to it. Well, I think the main problem with Kazarian is nobody really understood the Brave Machine archetype, and hence why everyone kind of jumped onto it, because there was a lot of ways to counter it early on. It was just the fact of, oh, snap, something new. We don't know how to... There were some, but it was still a very formidable deck at the time, and it took a lot of other decks time to catch up. It's um, true, it's true. And, you know, they, but they printed cards directly to help counter that deck, like, say, Barbed Wire. Barbed Wire was a huge card against them. And I remember when we were prepping for regionals around that time, everyone was trying to get their Barbed Wires in just in case they had that matchup. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so for, I'd say, the first two years of Buddy Fight, not only was there no ban list, but I'd say there was no need for one. At all. Like, the thought never even crossed my mind of there needing to be one. That's true. There's definitely no need for it. Something started to change in Triple D, though. Not necessarily power levels. Power levels stayed relatively consistent in Triple D. There was an increase, but it wasn't dramatic. You know, it was a slow, gradual rise for the most part. Mm -hmm. But Triple D was when we first saw a serious mistake in body fighting. And that was, do you remember uh, the Dark Hero Loop deck? With like the... No, that's not called the Dark Hero no. Loop. What was the card's name? It was called the Zeta Loop. Yeah, Zeta Loop. Zeta. Zeta, Zeta. Don't matter. How, how do you All I know is I say it the right way. Yeah. Um, so that was the first like really, oh, they were not preparing well for this. And they missed something and they screwed up. But they oh. used... They didn't suspect the community to go down that route. Because the main thing about it is, because most cards in the Zeta deck are Dark Heroes, Mm -hmm. give or take, depending on which variant you're running. And the card that was the broken card, per se, was a Impact Monster that was released before even Zeta came out. Mm -hmm. That wasn't even used that often. 
It was the reverse skull impact monster. Yes. That basically allowed you to grab a dark hero after it attacked, or when it attacked, or when it entered, I can't remember exactly, from your drop and add it back to hand. And then obviously like dark heroes do, they bounce back to your hand, mm -hmm. which is cool and all. So I guess, like, So with Zeta, you can call basically an infinite number of impact monsters. It created monsters. an infinite loop. And you're forgetting about the other key component. You had the earth demon that gained you a gauge when it entered the field, or destroyed one of the two. So all Bushiro did was errata the reverse skull impact monster to where it can no longer be an impact monster, which killed the deck completely, mm -hmm. but for good reason. Uh, it created the infinite loop, right? Mm -hmm. Which basically said once you have this setup, GG, you win. And that was clearly not intentional, mm -hmm. uh, but they corrected it. And they did it the way that, uh, for Buddy Fight at least, they generally balance their broken cards with an errata. Very true. They said, hey, you know, this card's totally not meant to play this way. You have to play it this way instead. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And they did that, and they've done that a few times since. Remember back towards the beginning of X when uh, certain old cards started coming back in bounce decks? <clears throat> Dalton. <clears throat> uh, like Gambit, for example? No. Um, no. And some people really like to abuse those, and Dalton had a very, very, very formidable deck using them. <laughs> the Skynets were too OP for you, I understand. They, they were pretty OP. <laughs> and what did Bushiro do? And it wasn't for my specific deck either. No. That's the best part. It was for two different decks. It was a the Menjo deck, Menjo spam deck, mm -hmm. and what was the other one? What was the Dragon World deck that was busted that they also had to? It was like a Thunder Empire. -y. I don't it might remember. Have, the it might have build. been, but basically Gambit, Force Return, and um, this guy's in your hand which did not have a once per turn clause on them, or mm -hmm. rather to have a once per turn so that it wasn't busted. Yes. But mind you, you can still use three in Dragon World, technically, to keep the loop going you for a while. You can still do loops. Uh -oh. But it won't be forever. Yeah. So at that point, Bouchard actually you know, said some things about the uh, change, because it wasn't just a one card fix a loop. This was a significant change of several cards. And they're like, hey, you know, we created these cards, you know, back at the beginning of the game before, you know, a lot of things were settled and they ended up being more powerful than they should be. So we're changing them. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I like that approach in general. Sure, it's kind of annoying sometimes because, you know, you read a card and you're like, this is so good. And, you know, the problem with erratas is you're like, oh, no, it's not as good as I thought or <laughs> whatnot. Um, but recently in the past couple months, uh, we, we've talked before plenty of times about the power creep in Buddy Fight X. Yes, there, there has been a significant rise in the power. And uh, we're here today to discuss whether or not the game can keep going without a ban list. Um, other games tend to do ban lists, and Bouchard even does ban lists in their other games. Vanguard has a continuing ban list. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of difference in ban lists. Yes. Um, per game, they're handled very differently. Vanguard's is very, very conservative. Only limiting or banning cards, typically limiting to one or two, mm -hmm. only limiting what they absolutely necessarily need to. Correct, correct. Uh, so, you know, very few cards end up on the list. Uh, whereas games like Yu-Gi-Oh, for example... Oh, no, he brought in the Yu-Gi-Oh. Yep, brought in the Yu-Gi-Oh. <sighs> Where you have the forbidden, the limited, the semi-limited, and the unlimited. Whew, There's but it a works. pretty big list, right? It's fairly it, big. It's fairly large, and they're not afraid to put cards on the list that other games would not. Like, uh, we were talking about, what is it, Firewall Dragon? Well, that one kind of had to. That, that one made sense to be put on their ban list or put down to one copy. But also, it like is still kind of surprising because you know it's like the main character's card, you know. Yep. And, you Which know, is a very rare thing. It's a big thing they were pushing it to show off the new mechanic in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it was. It totally was justified, but it was still a bit surprising. 
And then you also have games like Magic. Magic, instead of having a universal ban list, handles it on a per format basis because it needs to. Well, because there Magic are so many has so formats. many formats. Uh, so we wanted to talk about, you know, I guess issue number one: should Buddy Fight have a list? And number two is how would that be executed if so? So what do you think? Do we need a list? Not sure yet. I am honestly not sure. I feel like it might depend on what happens with the next set that comes out in February to see how unruly the game becomes. Mm -hmm. Because right now our meta is fairly diverse. It's not like it's one or two decks that you have to play, even though it might seem like it. I know, I know, Thunder Empire Chaos. But we know we do have somewhat of a healthy meta out there. Somewhat. But I really do think it's going to depend on how Bushro tries to help other decks compete with those ones. And if they just completely wreck their whole system and everything just kind of falls out of whack, it might be necessary. So I actually, for a long, 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 long time, was anti ban list. Mm -hmm. Because I, I found it almost as a thing of pride for the game. You know, hey, you know, our cards are so well designed, talking to new player, uh, we don't have a ban list. So when you're building a deck, you see a card, you can add it. You know, there's no issue with that. No format changes, no every card that you could possibly get for this game is playable. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool. Um, but I, I do think the power creep got excessive. And we've talked about it for a while. And the th main thing that concerned me was a lot of decks that should have appeared in the meta did not. There are a lot of decks that on paper should have been viable, should have been playable, and should have been played. And Bushrod clearly wanted to see more of those decks. Things like uh, Battleships, for example. We did not see a huge amount of them in the meta. Well, to be fair, Battleships, yes, they are somewhat consistent and decently strong, but I feel they were too slow for the meta that they were in, mm -hmm. or at least trying to jump into. So... There are a lot of decks that did not get their meta viability, and I think I've come around to the ban list. Not because, oh my god, Thunder Empire is so broken, let's get rid of it. But I want to set a little bit more of a fair playing field to get things more diverse, because you, you mentioned they're kind of diverse in our meta. We got, kind of, we got about six decks that some of our fellow YouTubers and so forth say, you know, Shout out Hunter Surge, because he brought it to my attention. Um, and I kind of agree with it too, even though not many people play water that can actually counter Chaos and Thunder Empire in their state as it is right now. Because I, mean, I think it's the cards are harder to get, not really. Basically but. our meta right now is Thunder Empire, Chaos, Prism Dragons, Water, Knights, and toilets. Yes. And with knights and toilets being the more rogue, I would put them more in the 1.25 category for the fact of they can do it, they can compete with those other decks, but they literally need to open with god hand or close to. Yep. It. And they need to be piloted by someone who knows that deck in and out and know how to counter the decks are going up against at the right moments and so forth. And even so, at this point, water's still kind of questionable, right? As good of a deck as it is, the big scary thing is, you know, are they going to get any more support? Because if not, they're just going to fizzle out, right? I will keep the dream alive. Prism Dragons have some good support, and they're doing all right right now. Mm -hmm. But in the actual competitive sense... They have not been piloted very much. Uh, so we have to really wait till Spring Fest to see what they can do. That is true. Uh, so really, it comes down to Thunder Empire and Chaos. And if you look at Worlds, surprise, surprise, what was our top eight? Let's you know. see here. You had a Thunder Empire Fang deck, a Chaos deck for the finals. Um, 
Th those and were and the, just fill it out with those two again. Yeah. <laughs> the, more those times. were the only two decks <laughs> in top eight. Uh, and that's kind of sad. Uh, yeah. I like seeing a more diverse meta. And it's really bad when you, you have to throw asterisks on to say other decks are meta. Like, it, it, that's been the case since late Triple D, where only a few decks were really viable, but it's gotten so much worse. That's true. That's very true. Um, so what I want is I just want us to have a more diverse meta. But also, I want a better starting point for new players because, you know, Butterfight's getting into year five. Mm -hmm. We need to keep the player base up. That's or, true. That's true. Or, or the game will be another Duel Masters. <laughs> so with this ban list, what take do you want, if a ban list does happen, to take? I don't know. I think there are pros and benefits to each. Obviously, we don't have to consider like something magically because there's really you know as much as we want there to be more formats and we're testing new formats there really only is one format for buddy fight right now yes that's true um so really that gives us an option a conservative ban list uh like vanguards mm -hmm. or a more i don't know what the word would be diverse extreme somewhere something like that ban list uh similar to Yu -Gi Oh's. I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh's is extreme, but, you know, no, that's me. No, I'm trying to think of a less harsh word for it. You know, a more expansive. That's the word I'm looking for. A more expansive ban list. So do we go with only things that are broke? Or do we go with things that are either broken or just too strong or make decks too consistent to try and keep the meta more interesting? Because not every card that's banned in Yu-Gi-Oh! is banned just because it's broken. Sometimes cards are banned, and this applies to Magic too, just to freshen things up and keep things interesting. Uh, um, I wouldn't say that, because one of the more... Well, it's not recent anymore, but one of the more recent um, Yu-Gi-Oh! ban lists that were released hit Spirals, mm -hmm. which was Tier 0 in Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, Spirals were and broken. It's, and it's still up there, it's still strong, it's still hard for people to go past but the meta shifted from just being spirals only to having three decks in in their meta see that's what i want to see i don't want i don't want them to ban a couple cards or limit a couple cards from say a tier zero deck like let's just use thunder empire as the example because you know it's easy i don't want them to ban all their good cards and just destroy any chance of thunder empire being meta again that's not what I see, right? I don't think you would want to see... I don't think anyone wants to see decks be crushed. And Magic does that sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. And Yu-Gi-Oh's done it a couple times as well. But with Yu-Gi-Oh, it's easier to adapt to those changes and keep your deck viable. So I want something more like that, I guess. So you do want the Yu-Gi-Oh style. I want to... But the, the only difference between Bloody Fight and Yu-Gi-Oh that if this ban list ever does happen would be the tiers, per se, because you're going to have a forbidden list, which is mm -hmm. completely banned. You're going to have a semi-limited, which means like one copy or two copies of a card, a limited, which is one extra card from the semi-limited, and so on and so forth. So I think I want the ideal, uh, ideal case to be the Yu-Gi-Oh thought process of how things are banned, mm -hmm. but with the ban list size of Vanguard. Because I don't think we need, you know, a 70-card ban list or whatever. I mean, well, we need like a... You also have to think of it like this. Yu-Gi-Oh's been here for 20-odd years. years. And a lot of the cards that are on that list are OG cards OG that are and way cards too broken. That Pot they, of Greed, they, what does it do? Like, they've even tried bringing Pot of Greed back and it still just broke the games. They're like, yep, nope, sorry. Even at one, it would be super broken. That's what they did. They brought yeah. it back to one and then it's too broken. They put it back on the ban list. But um, you know, something to along that format, you know, you don't have to, as of the moment, I don't think anything needs to be completely banned no. if that needed to be. But, but limit... for sure a few two ofs or three ofs will probably help the meta become a little bit more healthy. So let, let's talk about that. The idea of limiting cards. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, it does three things. <laughs> One, it can wreck the consistency of a deck, right? Yes. That's not necessarily what I'm looking for because that sucks if you know that's your deck. Um, two, 
it forces more creative deck building. Now that part I'm decently interested in, but I don't know. I think even with super meta decks, say Thunder Empire, we don't necessarily get one cookie cutter design. In Body Fight, there's lots of experimenting with different tech-ins and sideboard options and, 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 right? Correct. Option number three is to force you to play it in a different style. Uh, for example, using Thunder Empire again, let's say uh, people just aren't liking uh, the super aggro build of Thunder Empire where they're just hitting for face. You ban or limit a couple cards and, to try and get them to play more focused around the mechanic of having multi-world. Just an idea, right? So you want them to go from aggro to, to aggro. aggro. But a different type. I'm not saying that's what I want. I'm saying that's you know the third thing that could happen. So, all right, so why don't you real quick go over the choices again then for how they're limited. Basically, it comes down to... So we have a forbidden, which is zero copies in a deck. We'll have a semi-limited, which will be three copies. No, one copy in a deck. A partial limited for two cards and a limited for four. No, three. I don't know where I was I going. Know. I lost uh, count for a second. <laughs> to keep it as simple, we'll just say how many copies we expect. So zero, th one, two, and three, basically. All right. So another thing to keep in mind is there are some cards that might end up on that list at a certain number of copies that won't really affect the deck necessarily. Uh, say one card that I'd like to talk about. We're going to start going into some suggestions for mm -hmm, a band mm -hmm. list. Uh, would be Bots X-Link, okay? On paper, it is a very, very good card, and it does, you know, force some oddities with deck building sometimes. But if you look at the meta, no one's running it at four. Not anymore. No. But it maybe still should be on a limited list, say at two copies or three copies, even if that's what people are running, in case something breaks it further. Uh, yeah, also... You know, because uh, there is another way to look at it is there are non-decks that aren't really designed to be played with that, that people are trying to squeeze four copies into, say, like, a, I don't know, a Thunder Knights or Crimson Battler deck or something like that. That can be limited as well. Um, why don't we go into actual suggestions, though? Uh, that's not really one I'm crazy like, oh, hey, you know, once again, conservatively... And if we're uh, recommending your favorite card be banned or whatever, don't get triggered. <laughs> or, do. or defend it in the comment yeah, section. De yeah. Well, this is a discussion, and we'd like to continue this discussion because this is in a one-time, we give our thoughts kind of yeah, thing. And join our Discord you know, and get more hyped about it. Uh, so do you want to start? Sure. I'll start. Um, I was trying to think of some cards. I might think of more as we do this. Mm -hmm. But probably... Lots of slink for sure, at least down to three, just because it does help keep Thunder Empire consistent. And I feel like once the player can actually just drop it on here, just kind of like, all right, they're going for impacts. That's what they're going for most of the time with it. So it, dropping it down to three makes it a little harder for them. It can work out either way just because of what the meta is growing into with Bot Six Link, but just making it to where it's at three it kind of opens it up, might fluctuate its prices too, which is another thing a ban list can do. It changes the prices of cards as well. Yes. Um, but probably three copies. Uh, at I, the very least, at the most two. But I like the idea of two somewhat, just because it won't affect the deck too much because of the fact that they've got so much draw power, they can probably still get into them. Mm-hmm. So I like two for that card, and you like three? Mm -hmm. So I think we're kind of on the same page for the most part. Yep. All right. Um, so other cards, and uh, why don't we go by archetype? Oh, no, we don't do that. Don't no, do that to me. You don't want to? Don't do that to no. me. <laughs> don't do that to me. We did not prepare our list very well for cards to talk about. No. Um, um, and next one, a next big one that I think should be limited or banned if that happens, is Daryl, as much as I hate to say it. <sighs> too generic. 
for his own good. And the fact that it's basically, oh, check the top three, grab any card that I like, add it to hand, put the rest of the drop zone. And he's free. And he's free. And, and he's, he sets up the drop zone. Sets up the drop zone, continues plays, is border, there, borderline broken. But there's a not reason quite he's there. so expensive, you know? That too. If, as much as I hate to say Daryl's name, it probably have to be down to probably two to one copies in my eyes. I, I appreciate that because you're a big fan of Daryl, aren't oh, you? Oh, yes. You oh, love yes. that card. Oh, yes. But yeah, I see what you're going because basically Daryl becomes your, not necessarily the word I want to look for, but your pot of green. Okay. Not because he draws you cards. No. Um, what I'm saying I think is, you're thinking if I can remember the exact card that's like him, you know, um, pot of not desires because that no banishes the top ten. Duality. I think it's duality where you check the top three and then you can grab one from among them. The point is Daryl's filler. Yes. Daryl's in the deck to dig out your other things. Mm -hmm. That's his single purpose. He's not part of your strategy. He's not really there to be a monster on the field. You're using him just to dig more things. Yep. And sometimes that's okay, though I do feel it's a, you know, Chaos has so many other great ways to dig through anyways that it's a little excessive. That is very true. So Very true. I like Daryl as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. But honestly, I think uh, having to build Chaos with him as a one-of would be really interesting. Because no matter what, he's going to be in your deck yeah. in Chaos. Unless you're building maybe auto deities once they come out. But right. that would depend once mm -hmm. they're actually out. I think that's another thing we should preference. We're only really looking at what is currently out in the English format. Mm -hmm. We're not really considering Climax Booster stuff yet or anything past that. Because we don't know everything from yep. them yet. And having gotten the chance to play them themselves. Because exactly. there are sometimes where you're playing a card game, you're looking at reveals, and you're like, oh my god, this card's so broken. And then the card comes out, and you're like, this card is so not broken. Or so. it's not as broken as you thought it was or hoped it to be. Yeah. And then there are the reverse. There are cards that are way more broken than you would have thought. Yep. Um, okay, so a bit of a behind-the-scenes thing for you guys. Dalton and I had a discussion about this once before. We did? Uh, yeah, we did. It was last week, maybe. Oh, okay. Um, we were hanging out, and uh, we were discussing ban lists. Uh, the, it had come up in our Discord server. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about it and throwing cards around. So this is where this is coming from, because we thought it was an interesting conversation. So we're like, hey, let's do an episode on this. And I think by far the most interesting card that we talked about was Namaste. I know, I, I hate to say it, but yes. So for, for the fact of the only way for your opponent to get around the Dragon Namaste is if they can just place it into your drop, which there isn't anything as of this moment that can do that. You can get rid of her souls easily, but it's still a fact of it's too much field control for not to say. So as much I, as I'd hate to say it. What I find super interesting about this is this was not a card that was even remotely on my radar for. Like, I never even thought about, you know, limiting her. Mm -hmm. You were the one who brought it up, and you're the water player. Yes. So you know the deck. Mm -hmm. And the way you preferenced it to me the first time is, like, put her at two or three. Yep. And the reason being you still have a lot of great ways to get her out. Yep, you can bring her back from drop. You can search for her. There's many ways to get to her. And you said, and the way I like, I like how you said it. You said it, it won't hurt the deck very much, mm -hmm. but it'll make the deck a lot more dynamic with how it has to play. Yeah, exactly. Because if you say drop her down to two, that means you can fit in Cat Shadow, in my opinion, if you want to run the set spell build. Or you can run the size one... Um, What's it, what was it called? Female ninja, I want to say. Mm -hmm. So you can actually like use that for spell nullification. It just kind of opens your deck up for more intriguing deck building. Versus, well, got to run four of this, four of this for sure. Got to run four of this just to do more things. Four of this to do that thing. 
it helps the deck become more dynamic and probably help against certain matchups. Mm -hmm. Like Prism Dragons, like, I know I just updated my deck and teched in um, a Thunder Empire card that allows me to bounce your cards. Yes. Which you hated. Yes, I did hate it. <laughs> But that's kind of why. But even oh, though that I was in a match, which I, I don't know when this video is going out, so I can't say if it's out already or coming out. But stay tuned for that. You stay tuned for it. I had such a challenge. It was not just it was a long Dalton. Out. It was a long one. That's all I can say. It was a long one. But, Longer uh, than this video, <laughs> probably. But yeah, they're like because it opens up for water because that's what I feel water needs. Because yes, you can just run the basic version, having four of that, and I say four of. Um, the cannon, and so on and so forth. But this way, it kind of opens the deck up to other ideas of cards that can bounce, cards that can retrieve stuff from drop or call things from drop, like um, Jin, which, cough, cough, I do run, and so on and so forth. It really opens the deck builder's experience with the deck. Um, so I kind of feel like this has been a little on level because we've talked about two cards that are both very important to your decks, right? Mm -hmm. between Namase and Daryl. Yep. But none that I really play in anything. Mm -hmm. So let's pick one. And the only real meta deck I play is Prism Dragons. That's true. And I was thinking about it, what to, could be limited from Prism Dragons, because you don't want to limit Aldo or Thora. That's you know, the deck's main strategy. That would just kill the deck. Um, and I was thinking and thinking, what would be the best card if you were to limit the deck? And not necessarily saying we should until they've been proven. Mm -hmm. But theoretically, the card I would limit, Gemologist, which is, uh, what is it? The Gain searcher? a gauge and then search for a size three if you have six life or more. Which doesn't sound like a very broken card because it isn't. It's not broken at all. It's what you can do with it that's broken. Because that causes you to run far less size threes in your deck than you would normally. But then you can also think of it like this. If you do limit Aldo Athora, you still have Gemologist to search it out. Right. I don't know of any cards that can bring back from the drop. I think there might be one, but I'm not 100% sure for Prism Dragons. But it's still to the fact not you yet, can run... It will be next set. You can run Athora almost like a Nanase in a sense. Putting it down to 3 to 2, so it opens you up to more Athoras mm -hmm. potentially in your deck or more random Prism Dragons like... um. What's the one that you're using right now to, um, it's with a K, I want to say. The, 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 the Rainbow Crystal. The silver one. Yes. Y you guys know. The run, triple run, rare from Rainbow Striker. One of those, like bumping that up to three or four per se, just because it is a good card and just really helps you out. Or even running size twos that you can discard and say, like Pink Crystal, the one that got eroded from the first set, um, and so on and so forth. But you can also limit the searcher, I guess. I like the idea of limiting the searcher more because it doesn't hurt Prism Dragons who players who've invested in the deck as much financially. Well, that just means you can sell off your other copies. Though. Right. Um, so that's really kind of my thoughts on this. I, I don't want to spend too much time listing out cards. Do you have like one more you'd like to share? Two, but I can put them t okay, together. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. It's going to be in the chaos, but you can probably run it somehow, one of them at least, in the other decks. And it would be both of their draw spells that they have. Their, uh, their draw uh, spells the are... Ones, the one who comes from Havoc and um, Population Reduction. Not uh, Electrification, though. No, not Electrification, just because you need to have four monsters on your field. Right, that one's and a lot Just more in order to cast it. Like, and a lot more interesting. You're already running like two to one copy of that in the deck, if running it at all. All right, so can you explain them real quick, what they do? First one, um, the one who comes from Havoc, can only cast if you have two or more monsters or two or more chaos monsters on your field. Pay a gauge, draw two cards. It's basic, and it's once per turn. Basically a nice one. With a little but extra restriction. With how much chaos can resource gain, I say at least putting it down to two, along with the other one, just to kind of help keep the deck from being too fast slash can recover and like nothing because which is another big thing that i've noticed with chaos like oh you've just from behind you, you've just wiped out my field and i have two gauge and one card in hand it'd be a shame if i draw the right card i i, I know but i kind of like the way how chaos is 
like the one deck in the game that can consistently top deck a single card and build an entire field from it. That's kind of cool. So you I want to. You could still do that. Hence why you'll still have four draw spells per se. Right. Um, the other one basically is put a size three from your field and pay a life to draw two cards as a counter. That's which the... which is huge, Ooh. huge, especially since it's so generic because it doesn't specify a chaos size three. It could just be any size three, which is more busted in my opinion. So f- counter draws are like the best thing ever. Oh, of course. And off of essentially just paying a life because you do it when your monster would be destroyed anyways and. That's no cost. Exactly. So pay a life, draw two as a counter, basically? Mm-hmm. Oh, so good. Yeah, and one of the cards I could use with, um, what was its name? Elberon. The one where, it, when it's placed into the drop zone, middle of the top two or three of your deck and draw a card. Well, I just put it there myself to draw two. <laughs> so potentially I just drew three cards. And, and you set up more mill. Set up more for a more mill style chaos deck that's crazy or even if you're running in like fairies or toilets because you're obviously going to be running elberon 2 in there well look at this i just basically plus three and set up more cards in my drop for say the size zero self as much as that is a gimmick (laughs) or even going out with a hanako because then you have a higher chance of getting a hanako into your drop um the plays with at least that one are so much greater so maybe you can keep Ruler of Havoc maybe at three, that one to two, but I just see them being too dynamic, just too strong for what we have right now. It keeps the deck too consistent in a say. So the reason we want a ban list in the first place is to bring other decks up. Not by shrinking the level too much, just setting the playing field a little better for other decks. Yes. Uh, So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, If you're a big Chaos or Thunder Empire player or whatever, don't get upset. Be happy. That means you get to fight more decks. Yeah, you don't have to worry about, well, I only got to worry about the mirror match or this match. Yeah. You can actually have a, I guess, a harder time, but yet a more interesting time with your sideboard then. Because you're like, well, water's pretty big. Uh, Dual golems are strong. Um, uh, what else? Cybernetics, yo. Cy- cybernetics, whenever they become stronger. You see, that's and the thing. thing. And things like that. If like, they had come out at any different time, cybernetics would be the broken deck. Yeah. And we're not even, like, they're not even in tier two. That's, that's crazy. True. Basically, because they need a god hand to basically OTK, but yeah. that's the point. Um, so that's the thing to keep in mind. And the reason I don't want us listing too many cards is that's not the point. Everyone who, the reason ban lists are so controversial is everyone has a different opinion on how they should be done. Mm -hmm. So we want to, instead of saying, this is how it should be done, these are just some ideas we're throwing out. But we want to hear your guys' ideas. Yes, definitely. Either put them in the comment section down below or join our Discord and let us know there too. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's... I'm really excited to have this discussion because it's not every day that we get to discuss something so important for the state of the game, but also something where you really have to think so hard about deck building Mm -hmm. and the state of the game and analyzing what actually needs to be on a list, if anything. I mean, if you're one of those people who still thinks there should be no ban list, let us know and let us know why. Yeah, definitely. Let us know. We want to know why. Um, I'm still on the fence personally. I know Jacob's all for it, but you know it really does depend on what happens with further sets and what cards break certain decks and so on and so forth. All right, so here's what I think. I think what we should do oh, no. is between our comment section on this video and we're going to have a full discussion on this in our Discord as well. Yeah, link in uh, the description. We're going to come up with a sample ban list. Ooh. Like that. And we're going to do a couple matches using said ban list. What do you think? Uses a deck that's not affected by it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That's not how it would... That, no. It does sound quite fun. Uh, with your guys' help, let's create a sample one and even suggest maybe to Bushi, hey, this is kind of what we're looking at. That way, you yeah. know, because when Bushi fixes things, they tend to either go underboard or way overboard. We want to be just right. Just right. Just right. Uh, so, do you want to do all the outro stuff? 
Well, of course, you're not going to do it. You don't have any energy. <sighs> All right. Thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure to like this video just because it was a fun topic to talk about. Subscribe, hit the bell to get the notifications, though. Leave a comment, join our Discord, follow us on Instagram. We might even post our pseudo ban list once we get that situated. And above all else, any final words, Jacob? Nah, you, you hit it on the head. Stay classy, y'all. Thanks for listening to TCG Buzz. New episodes can be found on tcgbuzz.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. For box openings, deck profiles, and more, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.